Hey YouTube, it's Jeff at Darkwood Metals. I have a small project today for the shop and I wanted to share it with you because it's going to allow me to show you uh, a conditioning technique to how to put a pattern into the surface of material. Now this is the blank that I cut out on the plasma cam and this was uh, reclaimed stainless steel. This is from a drop. Um, it was not brand new um, and there are a few little scratches and surface imperfections in it. Uh, this is going to be used for food service, uh, not anything that needs to be sanitary, but it's food service nonetheless, so that's why it's stainless. And brand new stainless steel can be very, very expensive. So buying a sheet with a couple of imperfections in it, you save quite a bit of money. The technique I'm going to show you involves putting the swirl pattern into the material to hide all the existing scratches and surface imperfections that the material originally comes with. Now what this is going to be, uh, there are functions and gatherings where people use the five gallon water coolers uh, for drinks and things like that. This hangs on a table. The five gallon water cooler sits here and the spigot is right about here. The hole allows you to put a disposable plastic cup and if the spigot happens to drip, it'll drip into the cup instead of on the floor. Um, very handy, especially if you're uh, at an indoor function and you want to utilize these coolers. So. Let me show you how we're going to put that pattern into this piece of stainless. Alright guys, what I'm going to be using to put the pattern in the steel is a simple wire brush in conjunction with a drill press. Now, you could probably see how fine the wire is in this particular brush. Now this would be good for doing something like aluminum, but it's way too soft for stainless steel. So that's where this one comes in, and as you can see, that's a lot more coarse as far as the uh, diameter of the wire. Now, if you want to change the size of the circle, all you need to do is change the size of the wire brush. To create the pattern, let's say this is the edge of your piece, you want to start half on, half off, and make your first circle. And then you want to overlap the next circle by about one half. And that is what creates that pattern. The same is true when you put your next row in. Now you can offset them if you want, you can keep them even, it's completely up to you. But you want to try to overlap about half of the other circle. And that's what creates that jeweled pattern. It's easier if I just show you on the drill press in practice. So let's go over there now. Alright guys, I've got the drill press set up for 3100 RPMs, which is the maximum this little model can go to. Uh, I'm not going to be applying very much pressure at all. This is an older brush. It's not going to make a perfect pattern, and I'm not really striving for a perfect pattern. Um, like I said, this is just going to be holding a disposable cup to prevent uh, liquid from dripping on a floor out of a cooler. And there's the start of the pattern. Now obviously you can put um, a guide on this where you can set your depth and run it back and forth. You can measure, you can make this pattern as precise as you want, but ultimately uh, it's not going to matter for what I'm using uh, this for. So if you're doing something like an aluminum uh, piece of sheet metal for like the engine of a car, you want to be more precise, but this just gives you the basic idea of how it's done. Done. Well, I have to say that doesn't look half bad considering I really didn't take a whole lot of time putting that pattern down. Like I said before, you could be a heck of a lot more precise and you can get the pattern exact. Some people even use a digital readout on a milling machine to make sure that the pattern is absolutely perfect. 
Uh, I've seen this technique used on the bolts for bolt action rifles, they call it jeweling, and it is just an absolutely stunning effect. Now another thing that you can use, this happens to be my little angle grinder, but what's attached to it is an adapter to hold the 3M Rolock discs. Now what this allows you to do is to take your little angle grinder and use scotch brite pads, sanding pads, whatever kind of a pad you want. Uh, and the advantage to that is you can use different types of grits, you can use different levels of coarseness. Uh, this little adapter is an arbor so it fits right inside of your drill press and you can start making circles all the way up to, I think they come up to four inches in diameter. So again, just some other ideas that you can use in your home shop. This has been Jeff at Darko Metals. I hope you enjoyed the video. Maybe even learned a little something. Until the next time, I'll see you again soon.